Transitioning from monolithic system to microservices can be a daunting task. How do you modernize a legacy system without causing major disruptions? That is where the Strangler pattern comes in. A powerful technique for gradually migrating from a monolith to microservices without having to do a full system rewrite from scratch. In this video, we'll break down the Strangler pattern with real-world examples, explore how it works and why it's an essential tool for modernizing applications. The Strangler pattern is a design strategy where you incrementally replace parts of legacy monolithic applications with new microservices, effectively strangling the old system over time. This allows you to migrate to microservices in smaller, more manageable steps rather than attempting all at once transformation, which could introduce risk and instability. Imagine you have a large e-commerce application that has grown over the years. Migrating the entire code base to microservices could take months if not years, and the risk of downtime or breaking existing functionality would be high. So instead, with a strangler pattern, you begin by identifying specific feature or functionality like the inventory management module that you want to extract from the monolithic and build as a microservice. The process typically begins by creating a facade or a routing layer that intercepts requests and directs them to either to the old monolithic system or to the new microservice. Over time, as more functionality is extracted into microservices, fewer requests hit the monolith. Eventually, the old system can be phased out completely, hence the name strangler. For example, if you're working with an e-commerce system, you could start by extracting the payment processing functionality as a microservice. So all payment related requests will now be routed to the new payment service, while the rest of the application remains in the monolith. As the migration continues, you can gradually strangle out other features like order management or customer profiles until there is no monolith left. One of the best known examples of the strangler pattern is from Amazon. In its early days, Amazon platform was monolithic system. As the company grew, it needed to scale faster and deliver new features without disrupting its massive customer base. Instead of rewriting everything, Amazon adapted the Strangler pattern. Over the years, they incrementally refactored their monolithic code base into a series of smaller, independently scalable microservices. This AWS illustration shows how a monolith can be split into microservices by applying the Strangler fit pattern to an application architecture. Both systems function in parallel, but you'll start moving functionality outside the monolith code base and enhance it with new capabilities. You will continue stripping out capabilities from the monolith until it's all replaced by microservices. At that point, you can eliminate the monolith application. The key point to note here is that both the monolith and microservices will live together for a period of time. Another example is Netflix. As Netflix transitioned to a microservices architecture, they used the strangler pattern to gradually move different parts of the streaming platform into microservices. Initially, Netflix's DVD rental service operated as a single monolith application which limited the flexibility and speed needed for their growing streaming service. As part of the migration, Netflix started with non-critical components using strategies like API gateways and load balancers to ensure the old and new systems could coexist. This helped Netflix gradually replace parts of the monoliths with microservices, testing each component's functionality before fully switching to the new architecture. And this allowed them to scale seamlessly and innovate without interrupting services for millions of users. Now, to implement the Strangler pattern, start by identifying high value or high risk components in the monolith that would benefit from being moved to microservices. You will then create a facade layer that manages requests and routes them appropriately between the monolith and the microservices. Gradually, you can replace additional functionality in the legacy system with microservices until you completely phase out the monolith. One effective way to manage communication between the monolith and microservices is by using an API gateway. The gateway can act as a reverse proxy directing traffic to the appropriate backend service, whether that's a legacy monolith or a new microservice. Over time, as more traffic gets routed to microservices, the reliance on the monolith decreases. For more complex scenarios, load balancers like AWS ELB can dynamically distribute traffic, ensuring both scalability and resilience. Service discovery tools like Console or Eureka help locate the services in rapid scaling environments, while service measures like Istio or Linkerd manage and secure service-to-service -service communication, adding advanced control without requiring code changes. These tools work in tandem to enable smooth, scalable transitions from legacy to microservices architecture. Now, while the Strangler pattern helps reduce the risk associated with large-scale migrations, it isn't without challenges. One issue is maintaining consistent communication between the legacy system and the new microservices. You need to ensure that data integrity and consistency are maintained during the migration process. Also, during the transition period, the system can become more complex to manage since you are working with a combination of monolithic components and microservices. This requires careful planning and monitoring to avoid bottlenecks or unforeseen interactions between the old and new parts of the system. 
Clearly, the Strangler pattern is a tried and tested approach for modernizing legacy systems without the risk and complexity of an all-in-one migration. So by incrementally moving features and functionalities to microservices, you reduce the potential for downtime and system failures, while also making it easier to scale and innovate. Companies like Amazon and Netflix have successfully adopted this pattern to transform their platforms, allowing them to stay competitive and continuously evolve their architectures. And if you are interested in learning more about other migration strategies, check out my video on event-driven architecture, where I break down how companies like Uber and Netflix use events to achieve scalable fault-tolerant systems.